Hello and welcome back to Chari. Today I'm going to be talking about David Copperfield by the esteemed Charles Dickens. This is a semi-autobiographical novel um, about David Copperfield, also known as Daisy, Dodie, Davy, Trot. He has a lot of nicknames in this book. It follows David from infancy to old age as he goes from destitution to fortune and back and forth again a few times. It takes place between London and Kent and Norfolk and it is Charles Dickens' most beloved work and I mean to say that it was Charles Dickens' favourite of his work. And I can't blame him because this was just so wonderful. It's so hard to fault because every aspect of it was perfect. I'd like to especially highlight the, the characters. There are a few recurring villains, as they have to be, um, but they had depth and complexity and were understood and explained by David in a way that makes them much more than just like a regular Scooby-Doo villain. I'm just going to read them off my notes because I cannot remember this entire list. Uh, but we have David's uncle, Betsy Trotwood and Mr. Dick, uh, Peggotty, his old housemaid, and Mr. Peggotty, her brother, Tommy Traddles, his old friend from school, the Micawbers, who are just a hilariously eccentric family. And then there's Dora and Agnes and their families. And even just saying like, those names fills me with so much warmth. I think it's a testament to having a book of this length. Like I rarely read physical books that are beyond like 300 pages because I mean, this is, it's literally a thousand pages and I would see this and think, I mean, no matter how good of a book it is, having like three completely different book experiences in that many pages is my preference. But because it's so long, it has the space to give you all of these different characters and their separate storylines um, and you kind of, can lose them for a couple hundred pages and then they return to the narrative in a way that's just so comforting and that's something you can't really get if you only have characters for a few hundred pages. It's especially lovely when these characters that we've known for hundreds of pages like get to actually intermingle and meet each other and it's testament to how much they love David that they also really love and care for each other and that's like probably the most I cried in this book was just how sweet um, David's like old friends and companions are to each other. In a book of this length it's really hard to not have lulls um, and in Great Expectations, uh, another one of Charles Dickens' works that I've read, um, I haven't read that many, I've read Great Expectations, I've read Tale of Two Cities and like A Christmas Carol, um, so <laughs> this is the only second long one I've read, but in Great Expectations there was there was like a, quite a, a dearth near the start of the book where just not, it didn't feel like anything exciting was happening, I didn't really care about too many of the characters, but this has such a steady good pace. I think a lot of that is down to the way Dickens wrote it. So he wrote serialised fiction, which means it was published monthly in a magazine, which meant that every single chapter had to stand in its own right and at the end of it you had to want to read on. Um, and that's something I think in fiction these days we rarely think about, like you just don't dissect books chapter by chapter. But by enforcing that structure it kind of like ensures that it has a good pace throughout. It was actually astonishing that I didn't feel like there were any points in this book where I was like, Ugh, I just don't care particularly about this setting or like nothing's happening. It just kept moving but without it feeling um, like too hurried because often it was moving to like a place that you've already visited before or like a different situation but with the same characters. It's actually quite hard to pick out things to talk about in these videos with a book like this because firstly there's nothing that I can be particularly critical of because it's just all fantastic and also there's almost so much going on that it's hard to pick out particular bits. <laughs> One thing I did want to highlight though was what I thought was a point of development uh, for David. Spoilers in the next section, skip ahead um, if you don't want to hear them, but his marriage to Dora, I thought it was so doomed from the start because it was just such an infatuation on David's end. Like even though he was so clearly in love and devoted to her, it was a very childish love. Um, and I expected to be really frustrated by the way that relationship developed. And I did think it was almost definitely going to end at a certain point. Um, but I think the way, the way it did develop actually really endeared me to Dora in a way I didn't think was possible because like I hate people that aren't competent. Um, it especially came out when David was trying to teach Dora how to like keep a house and be more domestic and uh, go through the numbers and stuff and she just was incapable of it and I thought that would just be a huge friction in their relationship but David, at some good advice from Betsy, um, just internalised that that wasn't what she was capable of and him learning not to like push his expectations on other people um, 
felt really sweet and natural. And although she was his child bride, um, she definitely had a lot of his respect and she had the respect of everyone around her even if they knew that she was like hopeless in so many ways. I think that definitely came into the fore at the end of her narrative when Agnes was taking a lot of care of her. Um, and as I was saying, like seeing the characters that we've loved for ages interact with each other is just the, the most heartwarming thing. Um, the way like Dora and Agnes's friendship develops is the sweetest, the sweetest thing ever. I love that even though Agnes is with David at the end, as expected throughout the whole thing really, um, that doesn't diminish the relationship that David had with Dora. Like there's still so much mutual respect for um, her as a person and that sort of phase of their lives, which I think isn't modelled very often in fiction or <laughs> in, in real life. I think it's so much like what is now is the most important. And it often feels like that necessitates previous relationships being less important or being diminished in memory. Um, but I think the way that that was handled in David Copperfield was just just really, really sweet and good and nice. In summary, David Copperfield was such a stunningly beautiful, wonderful book that contained so much depth in so many different areas and ran through so many themes. It's actually incredible that you can't fault it for having taken on so much, um, but I just thought it was phenomenal. And now I'm actually kind of afraid of picking up any other Dickens because like the other ones aren't his favourite, you know? <laughs> if you read a lot of Dickens, please tell me what your favourites are or what I should read next particularly. Uh, we read a Dickens a year as part of my girls book club. Um, and I think next year they want to read A Tale of Two Cities, but I've already read that privately, which is against the rules of book club, but they're annoyed at me for having read it in the first place. So endless conflict. If you can give me a good alternative that I can pitch to them, I would love that. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in another one soon. Bye.